Uh, you guys were mentioning comedians earlier, so I'm hoping you guys watch the Cat Williams stuff. Yes. On the Shay Shay Club. Sharp. Yeah, yeah. That podcast has 33 million views. Yeah. Ooh. I watched it like a day ago. It was at 20. 33 million views. And Cat went bad on Rogan. He was saying how he just has on funny comedians on that he pushes. He'd never have me on. Rogan tweeted on. I was like, I'd love to have you on. I'm a huge fan. Come on. <laughs> Come on on. Very good. That's the great way to do it. But he went on, yeah, on a lot of he went of famous off, people. dude. Talking about, he is strange. He Kevin never Hart. Had, I love Kevin Hart, so I don't understand that. You know, that's Kevin Hart says in know. 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever, getting a stand ovation at any comedy that's club. He already had deals no, he's when wrong. he got here. Have mm, you heard no, he of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on the network television. Had it. Had his no, didn't. first year uh, own film called Soul Plane that he was leading? No. 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 We've never heard of that before, this person or since that person. What do you think the plan is? What do you think a plan is? Maybe people don't understand the defin definition of these words. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. Well, he's wrong. For a five-year period, every single move that Kevin did was a movie that had been on my desk. All I said was, can we do take some of this uh, shit out, and then can I do it? I don't need to be uh, overtly homosexual because I'm not a homosexual. doesn't need to, that to be funny. And me saying that and them going, oh, yeah, no problem, and then going to give it to this other guy and having him doing it just like it was – and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. They tell you there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same person open the gate. Didn't Kevin let Tiffany Haddish in? What do you mean ain't no gatekeepers? There's a hundred gates out there. Everyone I seen got a keeper. So let me just respond to this since I, I, was, I was there for the whole time. I was there when Kevin Hart wasn't famous. I was definitely there when Tiffany Haddish wasn't famous. I've known Tiffany Haddish since she was 17. So as somebody who is an eyewitness to this, Cat Williams doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And when it comes to Kevin Hart, no one works harder. No one worked harder. Kevin Hart did every single improv, every single fucking club for years, well over 10 years, probably 15 before he hit it actually. But let's say 10 years. And when I say he did every show, every club, Kevin would go and he would collect every email. He followed the Dane Cook thing. He had somebody who would actually go from person to person collecting emails when they were standing in line. And that's how he built his following. He also built it by being fucking hilarious. Kevin Hart is hilarious, never stops being hilarious. And the third thing I'll say about Kevin Hart, another thing I've witnessed with my own eyes many times, whether it was on a set with him for a month, whether it was uh, hanging out with him in a club, hanging out with him in a bar, I've done two movies with him, no one's more generous. No one's more generous to everybody. No, I think for I've seen that dude just really quickly. I saw that guy, we were, at, we were at Montreal, we're hanging out, having a laugh. This waitress, this kind of like, she's just sweating and she's this little blonde waitress going back and forth and freaking out. She was just doing her best to try to service everybody. She, she was just, it was so hard for her. And Kevin reaches into his pocket and he takes out $400 and just without anybody seeing it, he puts it in his hand and he goes, thank you so much for all your hard work tonight. No one heard it. I did because I was next to him. That's who Kevin Hart really is. So Cat Williams just doesn't know what the fuck. No, he's I think talking Cat about. Williams doing this. He, right, thirty-three million views. He went. Uh, he's uh, trending. He went against every big name, so this can mm -hmm. get traction. He goes about on Kanye, Cedric the Entertainer, stealing jokes. Yeah. He yeah. goes in on Harvey Weinstein, wanting to suck his dick at a meeting. Steve Harvey. Some of the stuff Wait, he go, said go was back, funny and it makes sense. Back. This is. But I, uh, yeah, he's saying a lot he's of, trolling. A lot of he's it, trolling. A lot, I don't know about that. I, I think a lot of it is jealousy. Like you, you read that like ah oh, come on cat cat's so talented and he's been the his own demise like he's the funniest cat in the world no pun intended but then yeah. a lot of it are his mistakes can you go can you go up Higher. a little bit because right here they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before this thing this thing came out but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency what am I supposed to do he did all of that I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script I get there it's three other black guys on there huh I told him no. What y'all do? I was like, all right, I don't believe that, but okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
He's a strange guy. His thing about Steve Harvey is funny. It is funny. He goes, you can be a, he's talking about Steve Harvey. He goes, you can be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Whoa. Potato Head. Whoa. <laughs> okay. He just was hard in the paint. Bro, Steve Harvey's hilarious. Not that one, but. Then he's yeah. killing it. Chris talked that we have now. Did he? The Chris Tucker that we have now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, not Smokey. Chris Tucker didn't want to be, want to be the poster child for smoking weed. He don't smoke weed like that. He he in the church. He Michael Jackson's best friend. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. <laughs> you ever met a man that gave you a nickname like that? <laughs> On Diddy. I came in this business saying I was gonk gonk spose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things. Because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side, period, period. All of these big big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's all up for all of them. I don't. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, T.D. Jakes, all of them, all lies will be exposed. You know, he, he's, a, he's had a history of drugs, apparently, so... Yeah. Michael Blackson, my boy. I like Michael. Most comedians don't get booed enough. That's how you end up with Michael Blackson, who is a real African doing a fake African accent. If you're the African king of comedy, sir, let's actually, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. If you're going to say that, you got to go to Africa and get a school. He does have a school. Michael Blackson has a school in Ghana. You got to put, it, put in some work. And these guys, they take my advice, they change their whole persona. And then they hate me for it. Blackson responded to Williams in a series of tweets on January 3rd saying, among other things, Cat Williams is a very smart midget. He took shots at the top 10 comedians. You don't even have to sound like a black guy while you're reading this, right? I'm not. He took shots at the ten, ten com top 10 comedians alive today so we can all respond and make him relevant, relevant again. He's right. But Jonathan Majors one that's actually pretty funny. I, who's Jonathan Majors? Oh, yeah, I, I just yeah. recently, yeah, from I don't want to get... I don't want to get with a white woman because I was scared <laughs> she might have me running down the street like Jonathan Majors. <laughs> not because I don't like women. I think white women are as great as any other woman, but I'm not going to act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. You could be Kang the Conqueror, <laughs> and they could take you, your rabbit ass down in two weekends. First of all, they went around the world for two years straight telling any woman that would listen that this was a good-looking Negro. Since when? When would y'all start <laughs> liking a big nose? When would y'all like a little head and a big jaw? When? That looked like my daddy. When you start liking my daddy? You like black people's features like that? Um, if this ugly N word is good looking, then all N <laughs> words is good looking. Thank, Thank you, you me good. Go, good. Thank God you, bless you. Good. To save God bless him. you for saving, coming to save that slave. If he had to be there by himself, he was getting all four guilty, 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 guilty. guilty, guilty. <laughs> she came in there just so beautiful, they had to knock half of it off. Bless his heart. <laughs> wow. No, read the Rogan one. Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on a show. Joe got six comedians that. Never been funny. He want to push out. Um, fuck says, you. Bro, I'm funny. He's one of my favorite comics, and I'd love to have him on. Joe said, "We we have we talk about him all the time. If he's down, I'll make it happen." Yeah. People people are damn me. Go. He's talking about you. You've been on there more times than anyone. I went. I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight science. Yeah. There's no. But I'll tell you. He's not I, talking about me. He's I talking saw about Cat the Williams at the comedy store a couple of times. He's a genius. Oh, Cat is a. Here's the thing. He's, I want no heat. Hey, oh, Cat, I'm with you. No, no, no. I'm dude, with you. Man. He's as good. Whoever's your enemy, he's my enemy. When he's on, when Cat Williams is on the as a comic, the best. He is as oh, good as one of the best anyone who's of all ever time. stepped on. Oh. Anyone who's ever stepped on a fucking. Yeah, he's top 10. He's just, he's just a little. He's a wild boy. I saw him. I mean, I was one of the few people I've come up to and said, I was like, bro, I didn't really, I'd never seen him. I go, you're so good. <laughs> he did 20 minutes, and I was like, fuck. Mm -hmm. There's more, but. Um, He's amazing. This is what Kevin Hart responded with. Got to get that anger out you, champ. It's honestly sad. In the meantime, please enjoy my movie trailer <laughs> of my next <laughs> film, Lift, <laughs> which will be dropping Netflix in eight days. Yeah, then he goes, there's a moment in the trailer where, I don't know who this is, says, uh, they really Google love you. Well, says, they really love you. I now know she's talking about Cat. Mark your calendar's world, this one is special. Yeah, I, Cat Williams, uh, it's tough. He's brilliant. You hate to see it. Actually, it's all really funny, though. <laughs> as long as your name's not mentioned. What if he was like Joe Rogan? Martin Lawrence. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he'd tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You're my younger partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie 
It'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word. My blah, blah, blah. Go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm, your, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office <laughs> and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too? I almost died. And I got to read the script in front of all these good white people where this N-word want me to get in a dress with him. He's saying there's some sort of thing like Illuminati. Once they put them in a dress, then they start like they're, well. No, I don't know. What? Oh, I thought you were going to say, no, keep going. About this. Yeah, something about like once they put you in a dress, whoever the higher powers are, that's when you become successful. But then you're selling your soul to the devil, basically. <clears throat> this is awesome. He's, and then he's trending. I think Kevin Hart said he'll never be in a dress. And then they showed him in SNL later in a dress. And then he started. Ah, that's a bit. I know. This is yeah. obviously, you know. But I mean, that's what he said. And also with Ludacris, just because uh, Ludacris did a rap, uh, he's saying that him and Luda were invited to this one thing. And uh, a <laughs> Illuminati party, right? Yeah, yeah. There was a crossroads where we both both invited to an Illuminati thing. It had to be one or the other of us. The decision had been made, so it was both of us. We were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do a sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. That's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous. Other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's hilarious. 